Energy is the fuel that powers us. It's what our brains run on. If you got to change anything, you need energy. Mm -hmm. So what what takes your energy, Carrie? What gives you energy? You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Carrie Lutz. Well, got a book for you that you're definitely going to want to check out called Power Barometer, Manage Personal Energy for Business Success by Josephine Campbell. The link is in the show notes to this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. If you got a question for Josephine or myself, kl at kerrylutz.com is the email address to go to. Josephine, great to have you on the show. So what is a power barometer? A power barometer is an imaginary tool that anyone can bring with them all the time. Doesn't cost any money, doesn't take any space. And you can use it to manage personal energy in your work life, your own and within your team, so that it will have an effect on your team's performance, on your business success. All right. So it doesn't really exist. It's not like the barometer up on your wall that tells you the uh, barometric pressure and what the weather is going to be, whether it's going up or down. So how do you measure it? You check in with yourself. So you use your gut because your gut is connected to the limbic system in your brain that holds thousands and thousands of pieces of information per second, much more than what your awareness can do. So you know so much more if you use your gut than if you use your frontal lobes, your awareness. And by accessing that, you will do a check-in on your personal energy level. The idea is first and foremost that you manage your own personal energy because of course what you bring to the table has an effect on what you can do together. But the idea here is also that you do it together in the team because everybody brings something to the table, right? Or everybody knows the feeling of being in a meeting and someone just takes out all the energy of the meeting, right? Yeah, yeah, those buzz kills, we know all about them. So do you do this when you wake up first thing in the morning? Uh, do you do it when you get to work, uh, lunchtime? Uh, how often do you uh, take your barometric uh, energy pressure here? So people who really take responsibility for what they bring to the table, they would probably also do it in the morning. But it's enough that you do it when you start the meeting and that everybody shares where their barometer is now. You know, that can be days where your barometer for good reason is low. And then it's better to be aware of it and for other people to know it. Like you don't have to talk about it the whole meeting, right? But just say out loud, my barometer is 30% because if people don't know and you say something, it, you might come across uh, in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, but if people know that you were already low on energy for good re reasons, they're not going to take it personal. And business is personal. That's another point of mine. It's not true that business is not personal. It is personal. It's you mm -hmm. who collaborate. It's you who lead. It's you who get things done. It's you as a person who is the tool, the medium for the work you do. So business is personal. That's why you have to take responsibility for how you are as a person. It has a huge effect on what you can actually achieve. Okay. So you got to own it. And uh, I don't need my philosophy in life is uh, all limits are self-imposed. And, uh, you know, it's your thinking. You have these thoughts and you believe things to be true that aren't necessarily so. And you believe things to be false that might be true. So mm. a lot of it hinges on beliefs, doesn't it? Yes, very true. So how do you change beliefs your beliefs? By adding more energy into the equation. Mm -hmm. Energy is the fuel that powers us. It's what our brains run on. If you got to change anything, you need energy. Mm -hmm. So what, what takes your energy, Carrie? What gives you energy? What gives me personally energy? Uh, hey, I like to dance, you know? Yeah. The dance. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, really uh, gets me going. But, uh, mm -hmm. but I have a lot of other interests as well. 
but in my leisure time, definitely love to travel all these things. And uh, hey, I love uh, hatching a plan and uh, seeing it succeed, right? Nothing's more energizing than success, right? Like your book. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so it's it's important that you prioritize the things that gives you energy. So I would say dance is a really good example. I also love dancing and I make sure that I can dance at least an hour a week. Only an hour, huh? <laughs> at least. Yeah. yeah, well, given my druthers, but seriously. So uh energy energy some people are low energy you know remember like during the campaign uh one of the candidates said about joe jeb bush he was low energy jeb uh so sometimes you might appear to be low energy but you're really not right mm -hmm. that's very true low, high energy is not equal with being euphoric or high high energy you can be very calm when you have high energy Mm -hmm. But hey. people can probably feel when they're with you, if they're very attentive, whether you have low or high energy, because it feels good to be around people with high energy and mm -hmm. it feels draining to be around people with low energy. Yeah. What has been said in a political battle, I won't take too much into account because yeah. it would also just be for pulling him down. Right. But yeah, sure. Don't you know the feeling of being with someone and it's just really nice and you feel like your energy barometer will go up at the end of the conversation from talking with them oh, yeah. or being with them or even if you don't talk, just being around them. Definitely. All right. So if you want to raise your energy level, what are the three things you could do right now to do that? First, you got to be aware. Mm -hmm. Then you have to take responsibility for it. You know, if you blame others or you say, oh, I cannot do this for this and that reason, then there's not much to do from there on, right? So you have to take responsibility and then you got to put it into practice. You got to do it. You got to do what you know will work. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. You just try something else. All right. So if you were starting out today and you just realize, you know, my energy, it's okay, but it's not really where I want it to be. What would you do? I would take a time aside a little bit of time to do something that I know that will give me energy. Mm -hmm. Whether it's dancing or, uh, hey, maybe driving the car fast, uh, too fast, uh, whatever it might be. huh? <laughs> so, uh, but eventually your energy is going to run down a bit, isn't it? Yeah, but that just makes you tired, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then what, what you got to do? Yeah. You got you to gotta get... You've got to treat yourself well with sleep, right? Sleep is essential. Yeah, it's essential. There's no way around it. We need yeah. between, hold on, seven and a half and eight and a half hours of sleep every night. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. I could agree with There you are 4% more. of the population who can do with less, 4%. I could go for like weeks, three, four hours worth of sleep. I don't do it because I feel like not really good for the body. But when I have to do it, I can do it. But then like uh, three, four weeks later, I'm going to crash and I'm going to sleep like 10 or 12 hours one night. Mm -hmm. So it's better to just get your seven to eight hours in. It's proven for the immune system, for memory, for fighting off disease, everything else. So a lot of what you're saying here is really healthy stuff, isn't it? Oh, yes. And I find that there's a huge correlation between how you physically feel and how you mentally feel. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? So, One affects the other and the other way around. What about the concept like Edison used to do? He used to take a nap, cat nap, 15 minutes. He never really slept, they said, although I don't believe it. But he would take 15-minute cat naps. Uh, how, how good is that? I believe that little naps is a, are, are very, very good for you. If you look around in mm -hmm. the world, you will see that there have through time, has been many different sleep patterns. No one says that it has to be exactly how we do. But if you look into sleep research, if you look into uh, the research of the father of sleep research, Kleedman, mm. who is, his, his, his work is still the Bible for many sleep experts. And it shows that there's a correlation between the, the day and the night shifts and what happens in our internal biological clock. Mm -hmm. So it's better to go to bed 
at night before it gets dark or just when it gets dark, depending on where you are and sleep before midnight and then get up when it gets light than it is to sleep just throughout the day. We have substantial research that shows that people who do night shifts, they live less years than people who sleep really? normally, right? Makes total sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So there is something that has to, I imagine this is a global audience. So I'm not good. That's why I'm, I'm oh, yeah. avoiding to, 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 to mention specific time because it's going to be different at what time it gets dark in, in, in Kansas to Thailand and Rio de Janeiro, right? But yeah. I think everybody knows <laughs> when, when is it the good time to go to bed? When is it that you would put your kids to bed, right? You're yeah. not going to put them to bed two o'clock in the afternoon and let them sleep until 10 p.m. Yeah. So uh, sleep, sleep is essential for good thinking, clear thinking, for uh, good health, obviously, for so many things, really, really important. And uh, you need to be fixated on it. And if you're not sleeping well, you got to figure out why. And you have to, whether it's medical help, whatever you need, you got to learn how to sleep, right? I truly believe that. But what my book is about, what I write about in the book, I, I do mention sleep. Mm -hmm. It's it's essential. But what I uh, explain is what happens at work. And then you're mm -hmm. hopefully awake. <laughs> so yeah. how the way we collaborate with each other, how mm -hmm. people are being led, affects the energy level yeah so, so also true. if you are a manager if you're ma if you're leading other people how can you manage people in a way that would accumulate more energy within the business for more success mm -hmm. okay so uh hey have you ever had periods of time josephine where you were low energy where you really couldn't mm -hmm. like uh, put a sentence together so to speak um yeah. How long did it last for and how'd you get yourself out of it? Yeah, so we had a situation in my family where someone was seriously ill. Mm -hmm. And um, and that, of course, that is draining. It takes a lot of energy mm -hmm. and it lasted for as long as that situation was going on. Mm -hmm. But throughout that time, if I didn't have had my my healthy practices, like if I hadn't slept, mm -hmm. If I, 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 I like meditating as well. So I take like Same five, here. 10 minutes in the morning yeah. and yeah. I would make, I was exhausted, but I would get up those 15 minutes before everybody else. And I would sit down and close my eyes and just check in with myself. And I could feel, okay, I'm on a 30% today. <laughs> and then I would be, try to be a little gentle with myself as much as I could. And I don't think I would have survived without that. And then I would go, I would make sure I would be dancing at least one hour a week. All so, right. you know, there are things that happens to you in life where energy is going to be low and you do everything you can, but you just can't do anything about when life happens to you, right? Yeah, life happens. And then, yeah. Very, very true. All right. So the book, uh, it's being re-released. Uh, I assume it's going to be on uh, Amazon and wherever fine books used to be sold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So oh, tell us it's again gonna, the, the name of it's the book. Gonna, it's called Power Parameter. Manage personal energy for business success. And it will be out in September. So at least in October, go to where you normally get your books and it'll be there. You can also sign up on my newsletter on my website. There's a lot of freebies there. Great. And then I'll send you an email when it's there. And we have a link to Josephine's website in the show notes of this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Make sure you sign up for our free newsletter as well. If you got a question for Josephine, myself, kl at kerrylutz.com is the email address. Josephine, a pleasure. Great luck on the book. We're looking forward to getting a copy and writing a review. Thank you very much, Kerry. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks for listening to Kerry Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.